from Acts, the second chapter. But the day of Pentecost arrived, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky, which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of the fire spreading out, and each person there was touched by a tongue. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious men who had come from every country in the world. And when they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because each one of them heard the believers talking in his own language. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, These men are talking like this. They are all Galileans. How is it then that all of us hear them speak in our own native language. Both Jews and Gentiles converted to Judaism, and some of us, some of us are from Greek and Arabia. Yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages of the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they all kept asking each other, what does this mean? For others made fun of the believers, saying, These men are drunk. <coughs> I want you to catch two things in particular. First of all, that they spoke in languages, not some spiritual language that you hear from time to time. People say the only way you can be a child of God is by speaking the spirit language. This is languages that other people could hear. The second thing I want you to catch here, that they were filled. They were filled to capacity. They were running over with joy. They couldn't contain themselves in the proclamation of the good news that God has given them. As I have shared with the children, upon the two being empty, and uh, they seen the risen Lord again and again. He revealed himself on the sea, on the seashore, and uh, in the temple, and in various rooms, and so forth. He unveiled himself and showed himself to them. And the day came, uh, ten days prior to Pentecost, the day of ascension came. And as he called his disciples together, and they stood on Mount Olivet, and suddenly the Spirit of God came down upon Jesus, and he ascended into heaven. And Jesus said to them, uh, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up there? Go, go, go back to Jerusalem. Go back and wait at Jerusalem until you feel the Spirit of God touching you and filling you. These disciples were in Jerusalem. They were gathered together. And the other thing is they were of one accord. They were of one accord. They were there and they waited. Not only one day, but they waited ten days. Ten days until the Spirit of God descended upon them. They were in oneness. If God is going to move the church today, and if God is going to awaken our nation, it will require that we as individuals, and we as churches, and we as a country, will have to become one, one in person, one in Christ Jesus before the Spirit of God will descend in such a way that He can really <coughs> use us. These disciples understood what Spirit meant. They understood it, for they had heard and, uh, that when God, Spirit moved across to the face of the earth. And He said, let there be dry land. It was dry land came forth. 
They understood when the Spirit of God moved. And the birds of the air fluttered in the sky. They understood when he brought forth the animals. They understood the Spirit of God. But they understood the Spirit of God from heroes of the faith. For there was Samson, whose Spirit of God moved upon him. There was David, where the Spirit of God moved upon him. And there was Ezekiel, and by the way, when have you read, last read Ezekiel? Well, it's probably been quite a while. And it asked me what my repertoire in making sermons out of Ezekiel, and I'd have to kind of scratch a long time. Because he's, if you read Ezekiel, don't read it for devotion, folks. Just read it to study and hear the Spirit of God speaking through Ezekiel. And then there was Isaiah, and the apostles knew this. I guess I have to come a little bit more human. And I say, wasn't there somebody that said, hey, wait a minute. We have sat here for three, four, five days and nothing's going on. Now we sure we, we've heard our Jesus right. But they encouraged each other with one accord. And we as a church need to be of one accord, knowing what our mission is, knowing what our goal is, and then, together with the variety of things that we do, all build into one great aspect of getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Now, when Pentecost came, the Spirit of God came upon these disciples in a mighty way. And it's not a one-time one deal, by the way. And I won't have time to sh share with you all of that part. But when the Spirit of God came down upon the disciples, they spoke in other languages. They were changed inside. For no longer were they going to go fishing. For God had changed their hearts and lives and transformed them. They had experienced the power of God in their lives. They felt the commission of God to go out and tell others. We need to understand that the Spirit of God comes upon us the moment we receive Jesus Christ. God's Spirit comes upon us. We don't need to go out and look for a second blessing. We don't need to go out and be hands laid on again, when you receive Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit has come. And He has come to transform your life. 